Hey guys, I'm Eric Perkins along with my brother Jamie Perkins. Welcome to our YouTube channel about construction stuff. Hey, uh, hey Chase, could you pass me my coffee, please? Sure. A little closer. Perfect. A little closer. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I got up this morning and checked the weather like every other day so I can plan out what we're doing, and guess what? It said it was gonna rain all day. Yeah, so we had our whole day planned out, and we didn't go out because the weatherman said 100% rain, and it's not rain to drop. It was actually 100% wrong. So now we're at the shop, but the good news is we can make an entertaining video for you to watch. That's awesome. You know what my favorite thing to do on a rainy day is? No. Is to sit on the couch and stare at my phone, waiting for my next favorite Perkins Builder Brother video to pop up. Wow, me too. Sweet. Yeah. So we've been doing lots of videos about inspections and I thought it'd be really fun if we did a video talking about all the stories we hear from our inspectors, oh, man. like the bad ones. And there's oh, plenty yeah. of them. There's tons of them, tons of them. Hey, let's talk about inspectors. You know, they kind of get a bad rap for being the bad guy because they're always coming in and telling you you did something wrong, right? Right, wrong. Well, actually, the inspectors are good guys, protecting public health and safety. I've got ours on speed dial. Yeah. Top 10. Story number one, check this out. We were building a house in a high-end development. The house right beside our house got finished at the same time. The homeowners moved in, and they thought they would just be delighted with the house. But instead, they had a terrible problem. Yeah, the whole basement, which was finished and high-end, by the way, became flooded with sewage almost immediately. Ah, oh, what? <laughs> See, the inspector was telling us about this. They had to rip up all of the finished hardwood flooring in oh this entire gosh. basement. So let's talk about what happened. Hey, honey, do you smell something? So it turns out after they tore the slab out that many of the drain lines under the slab were crushed, okay? And that probably happened from a skid steer or a mechanical tamper crushing them before yep. they even poured the slab but they didn't notice. They poured the slab <laughs> and built the whole house. So that's lesson number one. What's our lesson here? Well, you know, in one of our last videos, you saw us using a hand tamper to compact the gravel. And you know, sometimes even a motorized compactor could break a piece of PVC pipe pretty easily, really. You can see why we're super freaked out about <laughs> anybody running a skid steer inside a slab where there's plumbing, and maybe you should be too. All right, here's something interesting that probably a lot of people don't know is that if you are failed or cited on more than 15 items on one single inspection, the inspector is supposed to report you to the state what? on your license, okay? And they're supposed to come check you out and you could have your license revoked. Wow. So don't call for an inspection if you know you have like a bunch of things that aren't ready for inspection. It could really come back to bite you. Backfire. Yeah, our inspector said one time he had 32 wow. on one inspection fails which is, that's a lot. That's twice the legal limit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's one for you. If you're in a floodplain, should you build the house high enough or build it too low? <laughs> <laughs> now, the only reason that's funny to me is because I have not done that yet. <laughs> I'm sure if that happened to you, you would not be laughing at all. You'd be singing a really sad song, okay? But sadly, this does happen. It has happened here in Swain County where we live. There's a big river running right through the middle of town. Tuxigi. Yep, there's lots of low level land, flat, beautiful land right around the river. And guess what? People want to build houses there. Chase says I look sad. Yeah. But it's probably because I'm almost out of coffee. So here in Swain County, there's maps in the mapping office that mm -hmm. tell you where the floodplains are right. and the elevation that your house has to be above right. in those floodplains to pass inspection. It's good to know. Well, the inspector told us a story the other day about a man who built a house, did not check these charts, okay? Built his house only like eight or nine inches too low, okay? Dang. But that still failed. So in order to pass, he had to get a company in to jack the whole house up, like one foot, maybe not even a foot, or it was going to be deemed uninhabitable and it cost them like 35 grand. So there's your lesson. Make sure you know about the property you're building on. Everything. Yeah. Okay, so what I, I'll just keep like this eye looking at the camera and I'll make my other eye look at Eric so I can look at both. <laughs> All right, here's another good story. Don't let this happen to you. We were talking to the inspector the other week and he was telling us about a stairwell that he had inspected. It was on the final inspection, the CO. He was walking down the stairwell and he's like, man, this seems kind of narrow. So he pulled out his tape and measured it because it felt narrow and usually people don't mess this up. He measured it and it was like 34 inches wide, which is like three inches less than the minimum on a finished house, like done. So the builder had Bad. to tear out like all these walls and all the stairs to widen his stairs by three and a half inches. 
I can't imagine the amount of money that costs and the amount of headache. That is the sound of all your profit going out the window right there, I'm telling you what. Yeah, and the really the sad part of this story is it was just a lack of someone double checking. And like I said, I'm guilty of the same thing, doing something, not double checking it. Yep. So the lesson of this story is double check everything, all your numbers, all your measurements. Yep. They can really save you. For sure. And just so you know, where we live in North Carolina, the minimum finished width of a hallway and stairway for egress is 36 inches. So guess what? Your framing has to be at least 37 inches. Even wider would be nice. Yeah, we go at least 40 inches on stairwells as a minimum, just so we're not even close. I don't want to be close to failing on that. Nope. All right, so lessons, takeaways from today. Number one, yep. uh, don't crush your plumbing under the slab. Yep. Uh, number two, double check things. Double check measurements always, every time. Got it. Number three, know your property, everything about it. Everything. Anything else? Uh, well, try to be friends with your inspector because they yes, can actually help absolutely. you out with all of this stuff, really. That's right. All right, thanks for watching our video today. If you've enjoyed it, please remember to subscribe and click the bell so you get all of our future videos on your phone. See ya.